Hey there, hope you're doing good. I just wanted to make a quick video on how to dry your sourdough starter and then also how to bring it back. A lot of sourdough bakers really like sharing their starter just because you do end up making quite a lot of it. It does take two to three weeks to make your own sourdough starter. While there are many ways that you can use it in other forms of baking, uh, sometimes you just want to dry it out. So I'll just go ahead and show you how we're going to do that. First we need a jar. I usually use recycled jars. We need a scale that measures in grams. I use grams because it's more accurate and most recipes use them so I just use grams for everything. We also need a clean spoon and a clean ceramic or glass bowl. We also need some dried sourdough starter and some flour and filtered water but if you only have regular tap water that should be fine. I measured 15 grams of our dried starter into the bowl and then I added 15 grams of water. Add 30 grams of our flour and 30 grams of water. And we'll just mix that until there is no dry flour left. We just wanna add our flour and starter mixture into a jar. Now that the starter is on its way to be reactivated, uh, we just wanna allow it to sit on the counter or in a warm place. A starter is most active at room temperature or up to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see here that our new starter already has some bubbles going on. Now that my main starter has gotten to be fairly active, I am just going ahead and drying it out. I have a baking sheet and I'm covering it with parchment paper. All that you need to do is pour out your active starter onto the parchment paper and then spread it out. The thinner it can be, then the faster it will dry. I left mine to sit on the table in the sun for a few hours. It can take a day or two for the water to evaporate, so this mostly just takes some patience. Next morning, we can see that the new starter is pretty active. I discarded 60 grams of it, which did not go to waste, and then fed it again the same as before. By the evening, you could see that it had made a lot of growth and was clearly bubbly. The wet starter from the day before is getting to be pretty dry. I can easily snap some of the thicker pieces into smaller chunks. This is good progress, but there's still some wet spots. I let this sit again overnight. You can see it's much drier now and even more brittle. Make sure that your starter is very dry and snaps easily into little crumbs. Since this starter has dried, we can go ahead and crush it into smaller pieces. You can blitz this in a food processor if you would prefer finer pieces, but crushing them with a rolling pin works perfectly well. When the pieces are crushed to your satisfaction, then you can just pour them into your jar. Now you have dried starter and it should keep in your pantry for a long, long time until you need to reactivate it. Here's the starter we made from dry. I made this on Friday and here's how it looks on Monday. This is a much faster process than making it from scratch and it should develop a more mature sour tang pretty quickly too. There are some bubbles, but this really needs to be fed again. You can feed your starter a one to one ratio once a day, or you can just feed it once a week if you don't bake as often. I made these loaves this morning using my main sourdough starter and they turned out pretty nice. It does take a little bit of practice and patience, but even failures are tasty, so don't be afraid to try it out. 